This video gives instructions on how to set up VitaX Hub. By the end of this video, you will be able to download and use VitaX Hub on your device. You will also understand the different functions of VitaX Hub. VitaX Hub can run on any operating system that supports Docker. In this particular scenario, we will be using Ubuntu 18.04 with the latest updates. To ensure that you have the latest software updates, you can run the sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade commands from the Ubuntu terminal. It is required for the computer to be connected to the internet to install VitaX Hub. The next step is to start a terminal application and navigate to the directory where you would like to download VitaX Hub. And then run the git clone git clone github.com slash usdot fhwa ops vitaxhub.git command to clone vitaxhub. You can use the change directory cd command to navigate to the vitaxhub folder depending on where it is stored on your computer. Once inside the vitaxhub folder, you will see all the source code downloaded from github. You have to navigate to the configuration folder. In the configuration folder, you will see two folders, one each for ARM and AMD based processors. Depending on the processor of your machine, you will navigate to the folder with the same name as your processor. For this video, we are using a Raspberry Pi, which is an ARM based computer. Once you're in the correct folder, you will see several files. For this machine, we will navigate to the ARM64. It is necessary to stop any MySQL application running on your machine using the service or systemct1 commands, sudo service MySQL stop or sudo systemctl stop MySQL, because we will be running MySQL through a Docker container instead of running it natively on the system, as it will ensure standardization during deployment. Please contact our support services if you need a native MySQL instance running on your computer in parallel to the VitaX Hub deployment. You will have to run the initialization sh file. To run this, you will use the command chmod plus x initialization.sh command to confirm that the file is made executable. Once you've made the file executable, the next step is to execute sudo initialization.sh. This process will ask you to enter a username and password which will be used to log into the VitaX Hub admin portal. It is necessary to run as root since it will have to download various dependencies to ensure the successful execution of VitaX Hub. This will install Docker on your system, download all of the images required for VitaX Hub, and start the necessary containers. To test if the required containers are up and running, use the sudo docker ps command. You should see vitaxhub, mysql, and apache php images running. Once all the images are ready, you will open a browser to go to the vitaxhub admin portal. To reach the admin portal, you need to navigate to the IP address of the device on which you just installed vitaxhub using an internet browser. If you can access the browser on the same device as VitaX Hub, then navigate to https 127.0.0.1.19760 and click on the button available to accept the risk and add the SSL certificate. The next step is to navigate to 127.0.0.1 and this will bring up the VitaX Hub GUI. If you are accessing the GUI on the VitaX Hub machine, then you should see a login page. You may also access the VitaX Hub admin portal by navigating to the IP address that the system has been set up on from any computer on the network by replacing 127.0.0.1 with the network IP address of the VitaX Hub computer in the above steps. Once the GUI is visible, there will be an address bar on the top left to insert an IP address. You will have to insert the IP address of the VitaX Hub device and hit enter. This should bring up the login page. To log in, type in your username and password. This will give you access to the VitaX Hub interface. The first tab is the plugins tab, which will show you a list of all enabled plugins. 
Clicking on the Disabled button will show you all of the installed plugins that are disabled by default. Once you navigate inside a plugin, you will find various parameters that may be configured by the user. The values and ranges may be different for each plugin. For example, any plugin that requires an IP address should be configured with the correct value of the IP address to ensure proper behavior. If the changes do not take effect, you may have to disable and re-enable the plugin. The external plugins are accessories that are necessary for Vita X Hub functionality and are not user configurable. More information about plugins and how to configure them can be found in the Vita X Hub plugin guide available on Confluence and GitHub. The next tab is the Messages tab. The Messages tab shows you all of the incoming and outgoing messages to and from the Vita X Hub system. For example, the Map plugin is sending messages once per second to the RSU using the Map file loaded on the device. The next tab is the Event Log. This tab shows all the plugins that have been turned on, the process ID for them, and other details. It also tells if there are any problems or warnings that need to be looked into. You can hit the Clear Log button to clear the event log. The last tab is the User tab. In this tab, you can change your password, add users, and provide various levels of access to existing users. The Vita X subcomputer will be installed in the traffic signal cabinet and connected to the local network so that it may send and receive messages from the various ITS devices depending on applications. You must have the correct time on the Vita X Hub synchronized using Network Time Protocol or GPS. Vita X Hub must have a current time, as most dynamic CAV applications would require time synchronization between various interacting devices. Let's review what we've learned. First, we downloaded and installed Vita X Hub. Next, we learned how to navigate and log in to Vita X Hub. Lastly, we learned about the different features of Vita X Hub. By applying the knowledge from this video, you are ready to set up and use Vita X Hub on your machine. Follow along with the rest of the video sequence as we discuss other vital system components.